In this video, we're going to talk about cations and anions. Now, you might be wondering, what are cations and what are anions? Well, both of these things are ions. And an ion is basically a particle with an unequal number of protons and electrons. And whenever you have that, you're going to have a particle with a charge. If there are more protons than electrons, the charge is going to be positive. If there are more electrons than protons, the charge will be negative. So cations are ions with positive charges. They have more protons than electrons. Cations, I mean anions rather, are particles or ions with negative charges. They have more electrons than protons. Now you might be wondering, how are cations formed? And what about anions? Metals typically form cations. And nonmetals typically form anions. Let's use sodium as an example. Sodium is on the left side of the periodic table. It's in group 1A, and as a result, it has one valence electron. When sodium gives up that one valence electron, it becomes a metal cation. In this case, it has one more proton than electrons, and so it has a positive charge. Metals like to give away electrons. These are electropositive elements, and as they give away electrons, they form positively charged ions known as cations. Now let's consider an example with a nonmetal, like fluorine. Fluorine has seven valence electrons. It wants one more to complete its octet and become stable, also known as the octet rule. And so nonmetals, they tend to be very electronegative. They have a strong desire for electrons. They have the ability to attract electrons to themselves. And so when fluorine captures an electron, it's going to turn into the fluoride ion and now it has a negative charge. So this ion is known as an anion because it has a negative charge. And so that's the difference between cations and anions. Remember, cations are ions with positive charges. They have more protons than electrons. And anions are ions with negative charges. They have more electrons than protons. And atoms are electrically neutral. They have equal numbers of protons and electrons, so they have no net charge. Now let's look at some other examples. For instance, magnesium has two valence electrons. And so it's going to give up those two electrons to become the magnesium 2 plus cation. Phosphorus is a nonmetal and it has five valence electrons. Now, it wants three electrons to satisfy its octet. It likes to have eight electrons in its outer shell. And when it picks up those three electrons, it's gonna have a negative three, or you could say a, a three minus charge. And at this point, it's gonna have eight valence electrons. So remember, metals typically form cations, and nonmetals typically form anions. Now, this is the general rule, not the it's not always the case, but it's true most of the time. For instance, there are some nonmetal cations out there. A good example is the ammonium ion, NH4+. In this example, the nitrogen has a positive formal charge. And so this is a cation that doesn't contain any metals. So there are nonmetal cations out there. It's possible to have it. Another example is this methyl carbocation. Carbon is not really considered a metal. For the most part, it's considered a nonmetal, but here it has a positive charge. And so that's another example of a nonmetal cation, or in this case, a carbocation. But carbon can also have a negative charge, which is typical of many nonmetals. So this here is known as a carb anion. So remember, anions have negative charges, cations 
have positive charges. So that's basically it for this video. Hopefully it helped you to see the difference between cations and anions and uh, how they're formed. Thanks for watching.